Hey guys, what's up? Coming at you from quarantine in my house. But I'm always in my house, so. My neighbor's out there right now. Rubbing his hand along a stump in his yard. I don't know why I'm so naturally suspicious of people actually, now that I think about it. It's like, he's over there in his own yard doing something weird to that stump and I'm like, what's up? What's going on? What's that guy doing? Is something, do I got something to worry about here? So I've been kind of trying to kind of avoid talking about the whole crisis topic. Just for a little context, it is April 11th, 2020. And right now we are kind of in the middle of the whole virus pandemic thing. It's just like every day is like a movie, you know, it's like, Basically, I feel like that's what we're in right now. We're in some kind of a movie. I haven't really written a single thing about it. Um, I have not given anybody my opinion about what I think they should do. I've not given my opinion on what I think everybody as a whole should do, about what the government should be doing. I've made a fair amount of jokes about it, and I like posting memes about it, to be honest. But it's kind of one of my new tactics, actually, lately, is trying to take myself a little less seriously. I've been kind of like, sitting back and just kind of almost observing all the human behavior going on around me. And it is pretty fascinating, to be honest. And it kind of seems like to me, like everything's just amplified. You know what I mean? Like personality traits, amplified. Things that were going to happen previously anyway are just faster and amplified. Interesting stuff. Like, for example, like a person that's let's say, naturally a controlling person in their everyday life before this whole thing happened. Those people, for example, are going off the deep end, like they've turned into like super controlling people and are trying to tell everybody what to do and um, control their friends and family and almost shame them. I see a lot of shaming. So I think the interesting thing is a lot of this is in response to super controlling people who have lost control. And it's interesting because it seems like controlling people, they have a special type of anxiety. Um, it's a different type of anxiety than I experience. This is my theory anyway. Their anxiety centers around losing control or lack of control. When they have control, they feel good, or at least it's at bay. But as they start to lose control, that anxiety comes up like just like a lion. And these people sort of go into protection mode and it seems like their version of protection mode is trying to get control at all costs. So, you know, they have a narrative, whatever their narrative is, and then basically push it on everybody, even if people don't want to hear it. Um, and I think it's really interesting because it's almost like they're a little bewildered when their control doesn't work, when their shaming doesn't work. Like, why aren't people listening to me? And I hope I hope that it's almost a bit of a learning experience for these people that are super controlling that maybe people don't respond to shame and guilt the way that these people want to believe. I guess what I'm trying to say is that I, what I see is things are amplified. Personality traits are amplified. So what's some other examples? You know, like, it seems like analytical people, people that really like stats and reading all the charts and finding all the information, those people are going off the deep end and getting like super analytical. But you know, the main problem with this whole crisis is there's not really good data. You know what I mean? Like every country seems to have a different way to collect data, to record active things like active cases. And so you got all these different countries, none of the stats really line up if you actually look at them. So the analytical people are kind of, they're going crazy because that's the way that they get rid of their anxiety is by analyzing it all and it's not working, right? Um, so what are some other examples? You know, skeptical people, people that are a little naturally paranoid, a little skeptical of society, skeptical of culture, skeptical of government, skeptical of tribalism. Basically, those people are going off the deep end into like full conspiracy theory. theory. Theorists? You know, just another type of amplification. So what are some more stuff? Um, you know, people that are kind of unmotivated and, and kind of uh, lazy. I mean, those people are going the other way into just staying at home hermit mode, binge watching Netflix for 10, 12, 15 hours a day. I think there's actually people sitting at home watching Netflix, you know, 10 hours a day. Um, 
and it's almost like that's how they control their anxiety. It's almost like you have all these different types of people and they all have anxiety and what is it from? It's from the uncertainty, right? And everybody kind of resorts to all their coping mechanisms to deal with it. What are other things that are amplified? You know, things like, I see people doing a lot of like status signaling lately. Like, look how important I am. Look, I'm a hero. Um, look how smart I am. Look how successful I am. And these are the types of people who read like, you know, three articles on infectious diseases and now they're like an expert. So another type of people, you got the victim mentality people. Maybe in normal everyday life, these people, they, they, you know, they kind of get off at being a victim. And now those people are kind of, you know, leaning into that. And that's not to say that there aren't actual victims. There's lots of people right now. People who have lost their jobs, they don't have any money. Um, people that have overextended themselves, don't have any rainy day funds, can't pay their bills. Like for example, in Canada, where I'm from, we're at record high debt levels for Canada, in the history of Canada. We are at record high ratio of debt to income. That means people have more debt per dollar of income. You know, we've got record high housing prices. You know, we've had a 10 year long bull market that has just charged ahead and asset prices are sky high. People can already barely afford stuff and now people are losing their jobs. You know, record high unemployment claims in the last couple of weeks. It's crazy, it really is crazy. I've noticed like there's, you know those people that are like naturally wishful thinkers, positive people? It's almost like those people now have sort of moved off into this almost, like I don't wanna, this maybe sounds a little critical, but it's almost like they've moved off into a delusional state where it's like, no, it's okay, everything's gonna be fine, I'm gonna be back to work in one month. And then they just sort of like shut it out, put up blinders um, to the realities of what's going on. Because even if you don't believe that the virus is serious, you know, um, some people believe it's super serious, some people maybe think it's a little overblown, and I don't really wanna give my opinions on that, to be honest. But regardless of that, there's a lot of economic implications of what's going on here right now. You know, people lose their jobs. They don't just get them back always. You know what I mean? Like we could be in, even if the virus goes away next month, we're probably gonna be into a little bit of economic pain for a little bit here. And those wishful thinkers are almost, I almost see them like going into full on, you know, delusional mode. They just like refuse to face the reality of the situation. So another thing that I'm noticing is the issues are starting to go more into those identity-based beliefs. And I have another video on beliefs and identity-based beliefs. If you wanna check it out, maybe I'll put a link. Um, the problem is, is that now people are starting to take sides. And so they're, they're splitting and they're moving into the two camps. And once people are in one of the two camps, it's almost like they're invested in an outcome. So it's almost like, it's kind of disturbing in a way, but what I started to notice is the people who, there's some, I'm not trying to say everybody, but there's certain hardcore people who are warning of like massive deaths and all this horrible stuff that's gonna happen. It almost feels like they want it to happen at this point, just to prove that they're right, just to say, I told you so. That's a dangerous attitude. I'm seeing that a little bit. So. All those were kind of examples of people and personality traits getting amplified, but it seems like there's other things getting amplified as well. And it's almost like um, the paths that we're moving towards as a culture are being accelerated. It's like the timetable is being accelerated. Um, sort of like inevitable futures that were inevitable are now becoming realities now. You know what I mean? Here, let me give some examples. Like as the world moves on, it's inevitable that more people will work from home. Less people will go into offices. So I've been working from home for years. And it's kind of interesting because through this whole thing, not a ton has really changed for me. I still wake up in the morning. I still work from home. Um, I'm, I do online sales. And actually my business hasn't really slowed down yet. I hope that continues. I mean, I can't say that you know, that will continue forever. But, you know, to be honest, a lot of people are at home. A lot of people are online shopping. And so a lot of online shopping related businesses is doing really well. A lot of people that are providing any kind of service for people at home is doing really well. Like, for example, I heard Disney Plus um, in, the, in two weeks doubled their subscribers. So you got all these people that now aren't out and about. Now they're at home 
working from home is an inevitable future. And sort of as time goes on, more and more people will work from home. People are realizing they don't need to be in an office every day just to get work done. But what is this doing? So things are being amplified and pushed forward. It is basically forcing people home. It's forcing people to find the tools and processes they need in order to operate their businesses from home. And then after this is all over, a lot of these people aren't just going to like go back. They're going to have the processes and tools in place. And then people are going to start you know, requesting they work from home or demanding that they work from home. And it's basically just accelerating the future with regards to work, in my opinion. So one of the most, I think one of the most interesting things that is moving forward at an accelerated rate is education. So my daughter, for example, um, this was the first week where she had to do school online. So like she's only nine and it was actually pretty funny because we got like 20 kids all in one Zoom call. Um, a bunch of like eight and nine year olds on a Zoom call with one teacher and this teacher is trying to um, gain some control because she didn't really know what she was doing. She, this was her first time trying to run a class online, right? And she just left everybody unmuted. So this kid starts talking and then this kid starts talking and this kid starts, and it's just flipping between faces and the kids are actually having a great time. They're like, wow, look at this virtual hangout I'm having with like 19 of my closest friends. But the teacher was like, she realized that she had kind of lost control because, you know, so then she's trying to mute people and then certain kids are kind of upset because they're muted and then they can't talk to their friend anymore. And um, so there, there's a lot of learning to be done on how to do this. But I think once it's figured out, it's going to be super interesting because people are going to start to realize that you don't need to go to a building to be educated. You can just do that at home and like, probably way less time. So education, you know, you could probably educate your kid in an hour to two hours a day. All that stuff that they learn in that school, you know, probably could be taught in a relatively short amount of time. However, this raises another point that I think that is being um, brought to light about education is that education and socialization are kind of intertwined right now. It's possible that the future is that education and socialization kind of decouple a little bit so that people do their education on one hand and then they do their socialization. So like what is school really? It's sort of like one part babysitting service, you know, one part indoctrination with cultural community or in the case of private schools like religious views, kind of indoctrinating. This is how we do things. I mean, indoctrination sounds like a bad word, but uh, it's kind of the truth. Babysitting, indoctrination, um, you know, one little part education, um, a lot of socialization, maybe a little bit of physical activity. So it's funny, if you actually strip all these things apart and just take the education out, that's just one small part of school, right? So, like, what if you do all the education at home, but, you know, maybe you go to some various social clubs for your socialization? I think it'll start getting people thinking this way. Um, you know, i got to wonder, like, universities they must be a little scared because they have all these lecturers. And, and why do they need lecturers at all? It's because it demands a physical location. Um, but the, the thing is, if you can do it all over the internet and watch videos of lectures, you don't really need a lecturer in each physical location, right? I mean, you could have two or three of the best physics teachers in the entire you know, United States, Canada, North America, world, giving super high quality physics lectures. And you don't really need a lecturer in each place. So that's, that's got to be scary for, for education. I think that the problem is, is that we're often fighting these two battles of this is the way we've always done it. We have all these jobs. We don't want to stop doing it because we'll lose the jobs. And so... Anyway, that was a bit of a rant, but I think it's interesting because technology and tradition are often fighting. The two people, you know, they got those really traditional-based people that want to keep things the way they are for almost nostalgic reasons, but then technology is finding better ways to do it. So I, I hope, actually, that this whole crisis kind of shakes people's perspectives up about education and about how you can get educated at home. You don't have to go to Harvard or you could do Harvard at home.
You know what I mean? Um, it's interesting. You know, even things like workouts. There used to be a time where a lot of people went and did, mo most people went to a gym to work out or do aerobics. And now you've got all these apps and home workouts and um, calisthenics is a really cool thing. I've been kind of doing a little bit of lately, which is a type of working out that's still really hard, but you don't really need any weights. Like it's a lot of handstands and uh, push-ups and body weight related things. Um, I think we're, we're seeing a lot of changes in that. So now all these people that used to go to gyms are at home and they're like, I want to work out, what can I do? And they're flooding to these online platforms. So yeah, there's a lot of jobs being lost, but I think there's a lot of opportunities being created as well. And I think the smart people right now are looking around and going, wow, there's actually a huge demand for online education. Or you know what, there's a, there's a problem that needs to be solved here. There's, now there's these parents with their kids at home, they're trying to get their work done because they're working from home, but the kids need entertainment. Can we do like virtual nannying or, you know, do like online stories or, you know, like there's so many different ways you could look at this as a massive opportunity. But instead, I think a lot of people are so scared that they're trying to hold on to the past. And I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I think that it's possible that this really does change culture a little bit, especially if this goes on for a while. Like Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, came out with some stuff yes, you know, this week, and it's like he thinks that we're going to have some semblance of this for a year. So that's crazy. I certainly hope it doesn't last that long because there's a lot of people hurting right now. Like, you know, you got like a single mom with kids. Now her kids are at home. She's lost, she had two jobs, two service jobs. She's lost both those service jobs, you know. Um, you know, all the restaurants closing. There's a lot of people who are in, are in big trouble. And, you know, like the government's kind of come to the rescue a little bit right now, but they can't do that indefinitely. If this, if this lasts a month, two months, three months, you know, maybe they can do it. This lasts six months, a year. I mean, they just eventually, I don't know. So anyways, guys, it was just a few thoughts I had on what I kind of see around me right now. Again, I was trying not to talk about it too much, but I thought maybe I'd try to give a little bit of a different perspective on it and how some people seem to be reacting versus others. And maybe there's opportunities to be had during this time. Anyway, if you got any thoughts, put them below in the comments and uh, we can talk about it. Have a great day and I hope you guys are all doing well. Okay, bye.